Hi. Last time I did a quick teardown of this HP 8620C sweep oscillator, and we also took a look at included HP 86245A, 5.9 GHz to 12.4 GHz IG RF plugin. And if you recall, I wasn't able to power it on, and also noticed there are quite a few leaked and corroded capacitors on several of the boards. So I swapped the uh, bad capacitors with some new ones, and uh, let me show you what I did here. So the first one we had issue with was, uh, I think, uh, one of these boards. Actually, this one, um, yep. So this one here, um, I had to replace it with a uh, with a, a new capacitor, and since I didn't have the axial type of capacitor, so what I did was basically bend one leg of the one lease of the capacitor and uh, put it through on one end close to the board and then I use another flying wire to attach to the other side. So this is the board that I replaced the uh, capacitor with and also the two power supply boards and uh, as you can see here this one I had to replace two of these and the, these are uh, bad so again I use the same technique and the other one I also, on the other board, I also replaced, uh, this one just replaced one of these. So at first I was going to swap all of them, including the ones that uh, didn't show signs of any leakage, like these ones. But um, after I uh, took some out, in fact, I think I desoldered the, this one, if you can see here. And I did take this out, and I measured the actual... Uh, capacitor using a uh, meter and found out that uh, they they were actually with very low ESRs and uh, also the capacity seems to be just fine. Uh, the ESRs I measured were actually lower than the Nippon Chemicon caps that I was uh, about to replace them with. So one of the viewers commented that uh, these were uh, some M39003, I believe it's a uh, Tentadlax capacitors, which are extremely reliable military spec capacitors. Well, I weren't able to confirm, but uh, just by the measurement of the ESR, and it certainly agrees with that statement. So I ended up leaving the other capacitors that didn't show any way, uh, didn't show any signs of uh, leakage uh, on. And uh, so that's why I only replaced the, the ones that, are, that were leaked. The second part of the problem was that when I pressed the switch, if you recall, nothing happened. And I did have a meter measuring the uh, uh, power entry portion of the circuit. And uh, given that the mechanical construction of these type of uh, equipment, it is a mechanical connection for the primary. So I should be able to measure the primary winding of the transformer, but I wasn't able to get any reading. So clearly something was wrong with this uh, switch or some related uh, circuit. Um, so upon some digging, I found out that actually it was quite common for these uh, early equipment for the switch to fail. So uh, I used some uh, electronic cleaner, uh, like the one here. Basically what I did was uh, without uh, removing this, I kind of uh, sprayed it in and uh, keep pressing, keep pressing. And uh, after a few times, I was able to clean the uh, connectors and uh, so uh, that portion was I was able to get this uh, switch back on again. So after I replaced the uh, the bed capacitors and uh, fixed uh, the switch, the unit was I was able to uh, power it on and uh, obtain a signal on the spectral analyzer. So I believe, uh, given what I can see, that this unit now is fixed. So let me put these boards back and show you this uh, unit in action a little bit. So here's our setup to briefly test the performance of this 8620C sweep oscillator along with the 86245A RF plugin. And uh, the sweep output is hooked up to an oscilloscope so we can see when it starts sweeping. And uh, the uh, RF output, I hooked it up to the spectral analyzer back there. I haven't powered it on yet because I wanted to first uh, double check the uh, voltage reading of the power rails when I power on this 8620C. And uh, uh, the reason we actually were able to fix these uh, power supplies with not too much a problem is these 
boards, power, power supply boards, were actually protected. The output, if it's uh, exceeding the output allowed voltage, uh, the power rails, the uh, crawl bar would activate and with short output and uh, in turn would uh, break the fuse to the input. But since we were, if you recall, when we measured the uh, fuses, everything was intact. So presumably there was no over voltage and that's the output uh, connected circuitry were remain intact. But anyway, so let's power it on. And uh, as with any of the older equipments, it is actually quite noisy. So now this is powered on. And the first thing I want to do uh, is, as I mentioned, I wanted to measure some of the voltages just to make sure that they're in line. So I'm going to just uh, read out the voltage and we will take a look at what that is. So here's my ground and uh, so this is the ground. So this should, oops, this should be 5 volts. So let's see here. Is that 5 volts? Yeah, wow, it's just spot on. And uh, then here should be 12.4. That's 12.4. Yeah, it's close enough. And next should be minus 9.4. Let's take a look. Minus 9.4. Okay, so that's uh, close enough again. And 19.4 uh, volts is the next rail. Let's do that. 19.37. That's okay. And uh, and on the next one we have a uh, minus 10 volts. So let's see. I should just be able to actually uh, put my ground on the chassis here. So this one it would be a 19 uh, minus 10. Sorry. And it's a minus 10. And next one would be 19.6. Yep, and uh, the next one would be 9.2, and the next one is, uh, I can't read it from here, it looks like it's 15 or minus 15, um, yep, minus 15, so it's a little bit high, 15.7, but I'm assuming that is uh, still okay. So it looks like two of the rails are a little bit of off, but uh, the remaining are pretty much just bang on. So anyway, so that is what we have, and uh, um, now actually uh, when, when it's running, I'm going to power on the uh, spectral analyzer so we can see what the waveform, sorry, what the uh, spectrum we get. So I'm going to, and also by the way, as you can see that uh, we do have the sweep signal uh, outputted, and that is controlled by the, uh, okay adjust the vineyard here and depends on the speed we want it to sweep. So right now I set it to the highest. So okay, so now the uh, spectral analyzer is uh, powered on. So let me just briefly uh, zoom into that. And you can already see we have some sweep uh, going on here. So right now I wanted to set the start frequency to be just below the 86245A's uh, lower range, which is 5.9 gigahertz, I'm going to set it to uh, 5.8. And uh, the stop frequency, I'm going to set it just above the uh, 12.4. So I'm going to set it to 12.5 gigahertz. And uh, we can use this uh, output level control here. Uh, I'm going to turn it down a little bit. So you can see that uh, the level control is doing all right. So right now we're doing a full sweep and it does look like we are sweeping. Uh, the reason you don't see the spectral continuous is because the spectral analyzer is also sweeping. So uh, these are not in sync, but what I can do is I can turn on the max hold and what should happen is over time you will see that uh, that spectrum getting filled up. And so which means that this is actually sweeping correctly. So now let's check out a few uh, different, uh, let's clear it. Now let's check out uh, some other functions that this thing has. And uh, for one of them, we can use a uh, uh, CW, constant wave. Uh, let me just, wait. Ah, so this one doesn't actually turn. Oh, sorry, that's the one. Uh, oh, that's the veneer, sorry about that, okay. So that's the uh, CW, and uh, and as you can see, we can use that to. Uh, oh, let me just move up here. 
I can use that to adjust our output frequency. And uh, this is actually a very convenient way to, uh, to use this as a general RF oscillator to output a frequency that you want to test with. Now, unlike the 8671A, which uh, I did a teardown with uh, previously, uh, the output of that is locked to its oven stabilized oscillator. The output frequency from this 86245 is actually not face locked with anything. So it will drift um, as time goes on and also it's not as stable as the output from the synthesized oscillator. This is perfectly fine uh, as the main usage of the 8620C with its various plugins is for sweeping over a very wide range of frequencies. And the frequency stability at any given frequency point is not as critical as, uh, uh, you know, for this kind of operations. So it looks like uh, everything's working correctly here. And we have also a bunch of other uh, functionalities we can test. And uh, I actually have not uh, read the full manual yet, but it's pretty self-explanatory. We have the full sweep, which uh, meaning that uh, we sweep the entire frequency band and we also have a mar marker sweep and this one is actually we can change the uh, sweep start and stop so for instance we want to change the uh, stop of the sweep as you can see that uh, the stop line now is going uh, towards the uh, the higher frequency range of this uh, sweep oscillator and now we can also change the start marker so that uh, you can see that the start now moves up. So basically we can use this uh, marker settings and I will show you back here again. I can use these two markers, the green one and uh, the red one to pinpoint uh, the range I want this frequency range to be. So for instance if I want to do between uh, 9 and 10 gigahertz uh, roughly and here's what I want to do. And now I come back here so if I just uh, change to max hold now you can see that uh, we are only sweeping uh, between 9 gigahertz and 10 gigahertz. And of course, you can also change the uh, sweeping time. So now we're sitting at uh, around 0.1 second, uh, give or take. Uh, sorry, 0.01 second, so 10 millisecond, as you can see in the uh, waveform back there. Um, we can also make it uh, sweep slower. So if I, for example, change it to Point one, and we also can use the veneer to uh, fine tune the sweeping. So by the look of it, everything is uh, working properly, and which I'm very happy that uh, I was able to uh, fix this unit. And they will definitely come in handy at a later time. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, if you liked the video, please give it a big thumbs up, and remember to subscribe, share, and I will catch up with you next time.